Hello students, today I will take third numerical from center topic and uh, today we will discuss unsymmetrical composite areas. So over here we are uh, given L shape section and uh, it is uh, an unsymmetrical composite area. So let us uh, see how to solve such problems. So what he says find the centroid of given figure all dimensions are in mm and one thing to observe we are only given this l section and no axes are shown so in order to solve this problem first of all we have to assume our own axis so whenever you have to assume axis for any particular problem given to us in order to find the centroid then what you should do you should take the bottom of that figure as x axis so we have taken x axis at the bottom of that figure and we will take y axis at the le extreme left end of the figure. So why we are doing this because we want to keep uh, the figure in first quadrant so that all the values will remain positive when we will do the calculations. So first step is assume x axis and y axis because these were not given in the problem. And the second step is we have to divide this composite area into regular areas. So what I can do over here, uh, let us show one dash line. So I have divided this whole area into two regular areas, first rectangular area and second rectangular area. So let me label this as first rectangular area and this is second rectangular area. This is the second step in which we divided the composite area into two regular areas. So we have two rectangular areas. Now third step is we will find their individual centroids. Now we know that in case of a rectangle centroid lies at L by 2 and B by 2. So let us talk about uh, first rectangular area. Its length is 240 and its uh, width B is 30. So its centroid will lie at L by 2 that is 240 by 2 and b by 2 that is 30 by 2 so that will be 120 by 15 so that will lie over here so this is centroid let us say g1 of area 1 and it is 120 mm from left end and 15 mm from bottom similarly we will locate the centroid of area 2 so let us see the dimensions of area 2 See total height over here is given as 300. So from 300 we will subtract 30. So width of area 2 will be 270 and its length will be 30. So its centroid will lie at 30 by 2 and 270 by 2. So that will lie somewhere over here. So let us call this as G2 that is centroid of area 2. Now this was the third step. Now fourth step is we will start the calculations. So we will first deal with area 1. So we will write step number 1 in calculations. We will write area 1. So area 1 is a rectangular area. Under this we will do three calculations. First will be the area. We will calculate the area of this rectangle. So area will be length into width. So it is 240 is the length and width is 30. So its area will be equal to 7200 and dimensions are in mm. So we will write mm square. Next calculation will be for x1. Now what is x1? x1 is the distance of centroid of area 1 from y axis. So this distance, so this distance we already know it is 240 by 2 that is 120. So we will write over here 120 mm. Then third calculation will be related to y1. What is y1? y1 is the distance of centroid of area 1 from x axis. So this distance, how much is this distance? It is half of 30. So that is equal to 15 mm. So after area 1, we will do similar calculations for area 2. So second step in calculations will be, we will write area 2 
and we will first calculate its area a2 so what will be a2 it will be length 30 by its width that is 270 270 is the width length is 30 so let us write 30 into 270 so this will be equal to 18 mm square next is x2 so what is x2 x2 is the distance of centroid of area 2 from y axis means this distance this is x2 so how much it is let us find now see this total is 30 but this lies at half means this is 15 this is also 15 so we have to find this distance so we can say 240 total distance up to end is 240 minus 15 so that will be x2 so we'll write 240 minus 15 that will be equal to 225 mm then we will calculate y2 so what is y2 y2 is the distance of centroid of area 2 from x axis means this distance is y2 so how much it is let us find it will be equal to 30 this distance is 30 and this is half of 270 total from here is 270 so half of 270 is this distance plus 30 so it will be 30 plus 270 by 2 so this will be equal to 165 mm then third step we will find x bar what will be x bar x bar will be equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2 divided by a1 plus a2 so why we are using plus sign because this whole area is made, made up of two regular areas that's why we have used plus sign in denominator and denominator so how much is a1 it is 7200 into x1 120 what is a2 it is 8100 and x2 is 225 divided by 7200 a1 plus a2 is 8100 so from here you will get x bar as 175.5 mm so we got first coordinate of the centroid now in fourth step we will calculate y bar what will be y bar a1 y1 plus a2 y2 divided by a1 plus a2 so this will be equal to 7200 is a1 what is y1 15 plus 8100 a2 into y2 is 165 divided by a1 plus a2 that is 7200 plus 8100 so from here you will get y bar as 94.4 m mm so you see we got the coordinates of the centroid so x bar is what is x bar x bar is the distance from y axis so how much it is we have calculated 175.5 5 so from y axis it is 175.5 and what is y bar y bar is a distance from x axis so it is 94.4 so it will lie somewhere over here means from x axis if you will try to locate uh, 94.4 it will be somewhere over here and uh, if you will try to locate 175 from y axis it will be somewhere over here so we will call this as g so it is at 175.5 from y axis that is x bar equal that is 175.5 and uh, the g from x axis is at a distance of 94.4 that is will be called as y bar so i hope the procedure uh, for solving uh, unsymmetrical composite areas is clear to you thank you very much